Hello, and welcome to Step Outside. I'm your host, Pete Curie. Today, we're at a project here in Desert Mountain, and our homeowners wanted something pretty unusual for Arizona. They wanted me to create a French country courtyard, and I can't wait for you to see the results. First up, we'll show you how adding a beautiful flagstone patio sets the foundation for this French country setting. Then, how the right plants and flowers can create that French country feel. Plus, if you want a little taste of Paris, you can find it right here in the valley. We'll take you to this charming restaurant. That and more coming up on Step Outside. One of the biggest parts to this project was laying all of this flagstone, but it really provides the foundation for our French country garden. In fact, as is typical with a lot of my clients, my homeowner here came up with a photograph she saw someplace in a magazine that gives that feeling that she's after. So I think we'll be able to duplicate it. What the thing is with French country garden is you want kind of a real country feel. Stone, nice natural product, so that's what we're using here. We're going to have a lot of planter areas that are going to have very lush plantings. And all of these tall courtyard walls that help to enclose this space, we're going to kind of cover with green. In addition to that, we'll have more flowers and more green in all of the lower level planting areas. Now on this flagstone, the key is to not try to use all the stone as it comes off the pallet. Some of it you just have to throw away. You have no choice. You need to pick and select so you get nice level stone. And even though the stone comes in different thicknesses, you're going to do a mud base on top of your concrete sub-base so you can adjust the height to get it all nice and smooth. Then you want all your grout joints cut very evenly and finished nice and smooth. So we use a silica sand with our grout joints so it gets us that nice smooth finish here. Now over here where we have the steps, we wanted to have a really nice wide tread so that you didn't bump your feet into the risers as you were walking up. And I also overhung the stone here so I'd get a little bit of a shadow line so that you can see these steps a little bit easier during the daylight hours. And in fact, at night, we're going to have some overhead lights that will shine down and help with that same effect. Now, we're just about finished with all the stone on this job, so let's go see how progress is going over here. So this is the last bit of flagstone we have delayed. This job's kind of always been in flux. We've done a lot of changes and additions. They wanted us to make some flagstone areas a little bit larger for outdoor furniture arrangements. And then right in front of this outdoor fireplace, the tree roots, everything was close. We actually had to add this bonco to be able to contain the roots, but it's created us a nice little spot down here for people to gather. But we needed to have a few steps for them to be able to get back up and out to the rest of the yard. So we went ahead and built these steps out of masonry and we're putting the flag on them and we'll put flagstone on the face. The other steps were built out of with concrete base first and then we put the flag over them. And the last little bit of flag we have to lay is kind of this serpentine border that is gonna have the artificial turf that gives us the green on the one side and on the other side between the edge of the stone and the tall wall it's where we're going to have our vines and our flowers and our other green lush plant look that'll really help to lend that a whole country garden look. The other focal point of this courtyard is this water feature. Now some type of water element would be common in a French country garden and this one certainly fits the bill. What we did is we excavated this out, shaped the upper basin, brought in all these nice beautiful boulders. And you typically wouldn't see boulders like this in a French country garden, although they would use them in their rock walls as they gather them out from the field. We have a PVC liner, we've run our plumbing, put in a colored concrete shell, and after we set, selected really nice boulders for our falls and got them all in place, we're going to have the effect that we want with the water flowing over them. Now a lot of times what you have to do with water features like this is come back and fine tune them a little bit. Like this particular rock that we brought in here, which is going to go ahead and divert the flow a little bit more evenly over this lower boulder. So we're going to turn this on, let you get a good look at it, and then I'm going to take you around the corner where we remo remoted all of the plumbing and our equipment that really makes this water feature work.
Now I've walked all the way around the corner of the house here where we've remotely located this equipment so it's not in the courtyard. And with us today we have Scott Torpy, who's kind of our equipment expert for both ponds and pools. Scott, explain to me what you've got here and how simple the system is. Okay, Pete, we've got a half horsepower pump and motor and a 1.9 sand tank. That's all we need for this system. We get generous flow and very easy maintenance. Now, you actually put sand and gravel in this tank, didn't you? Yes, I did. Now, that actually makes it a biofilter because those beneficial microbes will live in here and help to eat the algae and stuff that comes out of the pond. That's correct. Now, what other types of filters could we have used here? Well, the other two types we could have used were a DE filter. Which, which you wouldn't we... want to use, right? Because you'd have to backwash that all the time. Absolutely. We don't want to use that, and we didn't want to use a cartridge filter either for basically the same reasons. It's heavier maintenance and would you would have to take that apart fairly frequently. Whereas, this is the ideal for this situation. So we'd have to backwash this maybe about once a month? Once a month would be fine. We don't run the system that often, so we're fine. Now the house is still a little bit under construction, so we actually have the pump plugged in, but ultimately when they finish the electrical, we're gonna have a timer that will operate this so this thing doesn't have to run 24 seven. That's correct. All right, well, the end result is we've got a beautiful pond with great water flow. Coming up on Step Outside, the easiest way to get the French country look in your yard, plants. We'll show you how the best types, plus we'll add a soft touch to this yard with a little green. One thing that's gonna provide a really good foundation for all the new plantings we're doing is this topsoil that we're bringing in. Now this is actually a mix of one-third sand, one-third mulch, and one-third screen topsoil. And what we're doing is, because this job is so tight, we're having to bring it in in small truckloads at a time rather than a big dump truckload and wheeling it in with wheelbarrows into the tight spaces that we have to deal with here. So let's go take a look at that and see how this is getting applied. Now, we're bringing in the soil in all these planter areas, and what we've done is we've gone ahead and dug this down anywhere from 12 to 18 inches. The reason we're replacing this soil is because it's in the desert. It's pretty much all decomposed granite. There's literally no organic material in it at all, and hardly any topsoil. Great for drainage, but not great for growing anything really green and lush. You may need to replace the soil in your yard, depending on where you live. If you live in older parts of Phoenix where it used to be farmland and citrus, might be okay. Probably always good to add some organic material, but if you're in a brand new subdivision, I guarantee you they've scraped all the topsoil off. It's long since gone. It may look like topsoil, but it's just dirt, and you really want to prepare your soil well to have great plants. So one thing that you absolutely have to have if you're planting plants here in Arizona is irrigation. You're just not gonna be able to keep up with the watering by yourself, by hand. Now here in our French country garden, we actually need two different systems to do what we wanna do with the landscape. So what we're bringing in, this is 5 8 poly tubing. And we're actually gonna run two separate lines into all of our beds. Why are we doing that? Well, some beds we wanna be able to water every day with a fine mist spray for the annuals and the perennials so we get really good color and they will really thrive with their shallow root system into our soil. But some of the other plants that we're gonna plant, some of the bigger plants, we don't wanna water every day for 10 minutes. We wanna be able to water them off the drip line and give them say two hours, two or three times a week depending on what the weather is doing. Now, if you ran the micro jets, which is gonna give us our fine mist sprays and that's these little tubes here, and they basically just have this little base piece that screws into the tube, and then it pops in 
to this 580, and it's a really easy thing to do. That's up and ready to go. And it has adjustable spray nozzles. Now, for our other stuff, our bigger plants, we're going to use these, and these are called a Bowsmith emitter. And this red one happens to let me know that it's a two gallon per hour emitter. And again, these with a little tool just pop right into this 580 tubing. And then we take this stuff, which we call spaghetti tubing, about the size of spaghetti, and it just pops onto the end of this emitter. And then you can cut it to any length that you want so that you get your water right to the base of the plant. You can't mix these two because again, you're gonna water with this guy 10 minutes every day. You're gonna water with this guy maybe two hours a couple times a week. If you water with this guy for two hours, you're gonna have a flood everywhere. But this way we get nice even distribution over all of the bed areas that we want, no matter what types of plants or planting that we're doing here in our French country garden. Now almost any French country garden would have a little bit of green, in fact a lot of green to it, with some real lawn. We didn't want to have to deal with the maintenance of lawn in this tiny little courtyard, so we're going to this artificial turf. But it has a real look to it. They've actually even woven some of this dead grass feel into it. And if you saw this really irregular shape that we're dealing with, you've heard the old adage, fit twice cut once. We're actually going to cut this several times, kind of do a rough cut and then a little bit closer cut and then a final cut as we're nailing this down into place to really get this to fit into this really tight geomorphic shape. Now, this is never going to give you that barefoot walk on, wet feel, cool lawn, but it really will give you the visual look. So it has good applications here in this courtyard but probably not out in your front lawn. And this type of turf obviously comes in a big roll and you can just kind of cut it to fit. Comes with a lot of different varieties. They've got names for it. You can get stuff that's maybe a little bit more like Kentucky bluegrass. This one is more that fits in with our typical Arizona Bermuda lawns that we use here. They also have a turf that's made more to order if you have dogs because it will deal a little bit more with their urine and not stain. So you have to know what you need to use it for before you select the turf that you're gonna use. Next on Step Outside, lighting can set the mood in the backyard, learn what to look for when shopping for lights, and we head to a cozy spot in Scottsdale that will give you that French country feel. In order to get the right feel for our French country garden, we had to get the right plants. And we had to deal with a lot of different types of light areas for those plants, like right here. This is obviously our very shady garden. So I've got a backdrop of some palms that'll stay green back in there. And I've got some plants that'll give us some color here in the shade, like Uriops daisy, and some texture like the foxtail fern, and some annuals that do very well in the shade, like the Gerber daisies and the impatience. Now over here, we have a little bit more of a filtered shade garden. So we've got to change up a little bit. The Uriops will still do well here, but I've added the plumbago, which will give us some really nice blue look. And I've got some annuals here, like the status, that will do well in the filtered shade. Now let me show you what we had to do in a sunnier part of the garden. Now here in the sunnier part of the garden we've gone to plants that will do better in that condition. I've got some salvia gregii here and some gold mound lantana that'll fill in with ground cover. One of the things we've also done throughout the garden is add little pockets of annual. So here we have some annuals that'll do well in the sun for this time of the year. We had to pick some things that are seasonal. I've got some yellow snapdragons some purple pansies, and a mixed color of the alyssum that will go throughout this whole area of the garden. Now let me show you my favorite part of the garden, which is the perennial annual part of the garden. Now if you'll remember the photograph the clients gave me for their inspiration for this French country garden, one of the things we wanted to make sure that we do is cover this wall with vines. 
We got a green backdrop and I've used two different vines. This is a white flowering bower vine and then I have more of an orange or tangerine colored cross vine. They'll compete for space. I don't care which one wins. We just want green color back here. We've also though got tremendous amount of both annuals and perennials in here. Now the annuals by their name mean they're going to give you one season and they're seasonal. Winter annuals are going to be different than summer annuals. After they're done, you can take them out. Some though, like snapdragons, you might just cut back because they'll come back and others will actually reseed like a lissom in the garden. The perennials on the other hand, something like this lavender, that should give you several seasons and all you want to do is if it's starting to look bad, cut it back. It's just telling you that's not its time, but it'll come back. I've also added a tremendous amount of other perennials in this garden, so they're going to have color and texture throughout the entire year. Now, to make sure that they can enjoy this garden at night, we're adding lights. Now what we're going to do is uplight these magnificent mesquite trees, and for that I'm using this little spotlight here. It's got a bronze textured finish. To be able to make sure that they can walk around in the garden, we've got these really cool copper walk lights. That'll actually eventually patina to like an old penny. And then, to give us a little bit of a moonlighting effect and to light the stairs a little bit better, we're going to be hanging this copper light from the trees over several areas of the stairs. It will also patina to a nice penny. All of these lights are LED, meaning they'll put out a lot of light using very little electricity and they'll last for years and years. If you're yearning for a little taste of Paris and a garden makeover just isn't in the cards for you, there's a little restaurant in Scottsdale that'll have you saying, très bien. Tucked in among the art galleries and tourist shops in Old Town Scottsdale sits a little piece of Paris. Um, Arcadia Farms is, is owned by um, an individual, Carolyn Ellis, and she started this in 1990. Started as a caterer. She got such a fan base that she then opened the restaurant and it's now been here for 25 years. We are a ladies who lunch place. Gentlemen are welcome, but we do, um, we get a large ladies population. We serve light, healthy food in a beautiful environment. Um, we have a lot of outdoor seating, a lot of patios. Everything is made in-house and it's made fresh and so you know that the food will be great and if you just like a, a sedate, beautiful environment, then this is a good place to come for lunch. All around Arcadia Farms are touches of France. In the dining area, the check patterns on the bench seating and wood paneling along with the antique sconces give off a very cozy feeling. Um, our decor is French country. It, um, we were patterned a little bit after some California restaurants that we like. We, um, we try to find things that are tasteful and elegant and that will stand the test of time. Step outside to the patio and you'll never want to leave. We, um, we have plenty of shade and plenty of umbrellas and we try to create an elegant environment that you can enjoy this Arizona weather. You know, there's not many places that you can sit outside and not have bugs and not have, um, you know, not have the, the heat or the elements. And so it's a beautiful place to just come sit in the shade with flowers all around you and eat outside. That's our most popular place. Our menu, I would not say, is very French. Our menu is more Americana um, with a few, you know, a few crepes and tarts and quiches but a lot of our menu is just healthy, fresh salad, sandwiches. Our most popular is our strawberry chicken salad. That's our most famous item. It's organic field greens, fresh vine ripened strawberries, sliced almonds with a homemade poppy seed dressing. Most popular thing. So if you're in the mood for a wonderful alfresco dining experience, stop into our Arcadia Farms Cafe. You will not be sorry. You know, if, if you come here with your girlfriends, and have a glass of wine or have a sangria and have a yummy salad, sit outside, it will become your new favorite place. Up next, we get a look at the final makeover and you won't believe the results. And we answer a viewer question next on Step Outside. We had a viewer 
email a question about the best way to light steps in the garden. Now here's a good temporary solution or for a party. Pick a nice architectural feature like this. You can put one of those candles that you just turn the switch on, it's got a battery operated, it'll illuminate the steps. But the best way is really using some type of low bolt lighting. The best thing here is if you've got a tree near the steps, do an overhead light that hangs down and it'll illuminate the whole area. If you don't have that, if you have a planter space that's close enough to the steps that you can put a walk light in, a tall enough walk light, it'll cast a shadow of light down onto the steps. They also make a very thin LED light now that you can put in between the rock crevices of the face of the step itself. Of course, they're all wired to your low volt lighting transformer. When the homeowner first wanted a French country courtyard, I thought, okay, why not? It's not a typical request here in the desert southwest but it certainly can be done. We started this project with the most important part, which was the design, the layout, working out all of the items that we wanted in this French country courtyard. There were a lot of things. First of all, we needed a courtyard wall. Then we needed to have some really nice features, the sound of water with our water feature. We had to bring some pretty big boulders in here to accomplish that. We had to lay some concrete so we had a foundation for all the flagstone that we did, which created all these nice little patio spaces. Then we could add in some of the texture stuff, like the artificial turf to give them that green look, and all of the beautiful plants and flowers that we brought in here that will both soften the space and give them great color. In addition to that, the lighting lets them enjoy it at night. And then this courtyard was turned into a beautiful French country retreat that the homeowners can enjoy for years to come. Each week on Step Outside, we show you some of the endless possibilities that await you just beyond your door. So come on, step outside and enjoy the view. I'm Pete Cure. See you next time. For more information on upcoming Step Outside shows, be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash cox7stepoutside or follow us on Twitter at cox7arizona. And to see previous episodes of Step Outside, visit us at cox7.com.